Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary friends. If it's your first time here, welcome. If it's not, welcome back to Actors with Issues with me, your host, Juan Ayala, bringing you another quick and casual chat with a delightful actor from the small screen and the big screen. Today's guest is an actor you've seen in dozens of film, over 150 episodes of television. Yes, we did the math. You've seen him in On My Block, Sons of Anarchy, and currently starring in Mayans MC on FX. It's Emilio Rivera. Emilio, thank you so much for being here. How are you? Thank you for having me, brother. Absolutely. So uh, before we dive in, we always start with a, a quick rapid fire game. Just uh, throw some quick questions at you and uh, hope for the best. So uh, <laughs> uh, starting with uh, coffee or tea? Coffee. Uh, film or television? Film. Drama or comedy? Drama. Hero or villain? Villain. Uh, what actors had the biggest influence on you? Uh... There's a few. Did I name them out? Or what? I like uh, uh, Eddie Olmos, um, Christopher Walken, and uh, John Malkovich. Uh, what was your first non-acting job? My first non-acting job, uh, I was a paper boy. I used to throw the paper. Hmm. At eight years old, throwing the paper. <laughs> I used uh, to make $30 a month. $30 a month? And then yes. I used to have to pay $15 for rent to my dad. <laughs> Teaching yeah, you early. <laughs> he did. He did. Uh, what's a movie that never fails to make you laugh? Never fails to make me laugh. Wow. Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, the jerk. <laughs> and uh, one that a movie that never fails to make you cry. Oh, man, I have to say Angels with Dirty Faces. You know, that's my favorite. Well, that's just my favorite movie of all time. You know? mm -hmm. And my, my dog Skip. And uh, if you could guest star on any TV show, which would you choose? My name is MC. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> that's the one. I really dig the show a lot. No, no, and, another, and it would be, it would be uh, Ozark. Oh, good choice. I, I love Great Ozark. Man. Yes. And uh, in three words, describe your most memorable audition. And memorable can be good or bad, so that I leave up to you. In three words? Yeah. I really sucked. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Man, if I had a nickel for <laughs> <laughs> no, because you know what it was? It was for a great role in that show lasted like six years. And and the guy that used to hire me all the time, I um he expected a lot from me. So I went straight to producers and I was mm -hmm. going through a lot of issues at the time. So I went in there and not knew one word. It was a four-page scene, and I knew not yeah. one word. He and he never, you know, and I worked so much for him. He hired me so many times. And after that audition, I never got hired from him again. I never, I never got called to see him again, you know? So, wow. yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so, uh, so, maybe. yeah, of course. So, you know, as we all know, no two artist journeys are alike. Uh, so when did you first become involved in, in the arts and, and when did you decide you wanted to start pursuing it on a, on a, like a long-term career level? You know, man, uh, I got clean and sober on uh, this month, May 15th will be 32 years clean and sober. Wow. And, uh, Congratulations. So, Thank you, thank you, brother. And then uh, one of my, my, um, it was a, um, I guess like a rehab guy, who um, asked me, what was I was really, I had six months clean and sober already, and he told me what was the most proudest moment that you can think of ever, ever. Hmm. And uh, I remember when I was a kid, I stuttered a lot. I was a big stutterer, and um, I got teased about it. So I remember I did a play when I was eight years old called Rumble Still. Mm -hmm. And I played Rumpelstiltskin, you know, and, and um, I remember when I did the play, I didn't stutter not one time because I already knew what I was going to say. Right. And then um, and I, got, I remember the applause they were applauding for me and it felt so good, you know, and I'm not to stutter. And of course, when it, when it was done, I, I was a stutterer. And I told him that story because, well, then you, you need to be an actor. That's what made you feel good. That's the first thing that could pop in your head that makes you feel good. Then you should try acting. And uh, and I did. And I did it for, I, I did theater. I did everything. Anything I, I could be on any stage, I could do it. I was there. Even if it was two people in the, in the audience, I was there. And that was my new high. So mm -hmm. I was just looking for stages to be on, you know, did stand-up comedy for 10 years. But it kicked off real quick for me. So after about four years, I was able to quit the day job, which was a night job. And um, in 95, I did the movie Con Air and I made a chunk of money, bought a few homes. And then I never looked back, brother. So I've been doing this for a living since 1995. It just worked out, man. Because, but you know, as much as I spent trying to get money for drugs, I spent that time on learning the craft. 
Mm -hmm. It was my new my new high, you know. So anytime I went to a new improv place or a new theater group, it was just like I, I, I ate it all up. I just ate it up, man, because that was my I was a dope fiend, you know. I was a dope fiend. This was my new dope, you know, was the acting. Yeah. And you know, um, as someone who just loves and has always loved movies and TV, I've seen you in so many things, especially like looking at your like, you know, your IMDb page. I'm like, I've, I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. Uh, I, and and you know, in the last five years between or last really like ten plus years with between Sons of Anarchy, On My Block, Mayans, like just some of my like my favorite shows. It's been so awesome to like see that representation as an actor as a latino just seeing that these stories are being told we've got people like in the industry it's just been so awesome to see that we have latinos in the industry beyond just like novelas because you know we all yes. grew up watching those on tv right, so right, seeing right. that in hollywood and american tv has just been so awesome and so um thank yeah, you it's just you know congrats thank so you, much on, on your you. career and, and seeing mayans especially this whole cast you got danny pino jd pardo JD part of my fellow Salvadorian, you know, like even right. thinking like they're Salvadorians in Hollywood, like leading shows, like it's just like so awesome to see. Thank you. And thank you for that, for being so positive about that. And, and you saying that, you know, uh, uh, you know, Sons of Anarchy and the Mayans MC being one of your favorite shows and, you know, me that being a Chicano Latino in it, um, that you don't, that you take it as the work as that, you know what I'm saying? It, you know, it's, the characters are not positive characters. But you're seeing the work, you're seeing past that. You dig what I'm saying? And you yeah. know as well as I do, a lot of the people will be knocking us down saying, you shouldn't play those roles, you shouldn't play those roles. No, you, you don't be typecast. Be lucky you're a type. You dig what I'm saying? Right. Because then that's going to get you in the door. Now, right. you might be playing these roles here and there, but then all of a sudden they'll see you enough and they'll say, oh shit, that guy can actually act. You know what right. I'm saying? And they start writing these parts that are deeper for you. You dig what I'm saying? Same character, but a deeper role. You know, mm -hmm. so just, just be happy you're a type, man. You know, that's why I tell. That's why I tell my young Latino actors, man. You know, what I mean, what about this? What about that? I go, just be the best that. Uh -huh. And then the the this. I've been paying Marcus Alvarez um, since two thousand eight, right? Marcus Alvarez, a cold killer. You see me, I do some bad things, but as time went on, now you know I have a family. It's just because we we're not just bad guys. You know, we don't, some of the bad guys don't even know they're bad guys. They're just living their life the best way they know how. You think what I'm saying? Right. So yeah, give the guys a break, man. But I love the way the way you presented it yourself right now. That's beautiful. As an actor, I'll read some scripts or I'll see some, if I'm fortunate enough to get auditions or whatnot. You know, I'll see that uh, the characters is it'll say like you know uh, drug lord immigrant, and I'm like, there's so much more than immigrant stories. But I have to remember it. Like my my parents are immigrants. Right, they right, came right. from El Salvador and they had their whole journey. So if someone is putting millions of dollars and telling an immigrant story, I should consider myself fortunate just to get an audition for that, you know? Yes, and sure. just, I'm trying, it's so hard to stay positive in an industry that's full of so much rejection and so many moving parts. But, you know, as an actor, you just gotta like, like you said, like stay positive, see it from that angle. Yes. Uh, Cause if we you're, start to get picky. You see it as a performer, you're not an immigrant, your parents were, but you could play that part. You dig what I'm saying? So play the shit out of it, bro. Right. You dig what I'm saying? Play the shit out of it. You know what I mean? Show some, show the, 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 the hurt they go through, you know, even with the eyes, even though if it's not written that way, put it in the eyes. We're mm -hmm. actors. You dig what I'm saying, brother? And let them feel for us. It could be, um, it could be a, a five and under. And right. yeah, and that five and under, because I've had many five and unders. And, but you know what? My, I sold it with my eyes. Just, you know what? Write them something else because that guy really sold that. You dig what I'm saying? That little, that good work is going to get you more work, you know? Right. You know, you know, before we dig into Sons of Anarchy and Mayans, um, I want to quickly touch on the show you worked on, uh, On My Block, which I didn't mention yes. before. It was one of my favorite uh, shows of 2018. It was one of the first shows I ever covered as a journalist as well. Uh, and, you know, just I remember how impactful it was to see a show that was uh, sort of getting in on like the early years of someone that was a gang member, because you don't you really see that sort of like right. when they got into it. it. To me, it was almost like sort of like a Bronx tale. Right, uh, but right. with Latino and with well, the whole comedy, funny behind it, yes, exactly. With that humor behind it to just make it more relatable. Uh, yes. So, what do you remember from that experience working on that show? I remember, you know, they had what happened was I, I was going through a difficult time in my life. My, I was losing my brother; he was passing away, and uh, they were calling me for the show. And I really, but I didn't want to talk to nobody. And then, uh, so they called again. It was, it was like they kept on calling. And, my brother was slowly dying, and I now just and then finally I, I told my, you know, I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to work. I don't care about nothing right now. And then, uh, okay. And then, uh, so then they stopped calling. And then, 
uh, my brother passed away and then I so I was still mourning and then uh about um a month passed by and I told my agent I go hey you know what I'm, I feel better now you know can you give them a call see where they're at and they go and they, they call they go they've been waiting for you all the time they wanted you for cheapo period you know what I'm talking wow. about so that was kind of pretty cool bro you know what I'm saying yeah and uh so that was kind of uh, and then uh when I went in there and then we read and I talked I just met it was like a like a general meeting and then so they gave me the things and I, I go so I had a way I wanted to do chivo and they loved it but they said immediately we want you to do it this way like so monotone and uh so I started doing it and I couldn't believe that's what they wanted you know it was like you know it's actually want to be a little bit expressive and we put our little commas right. and we put you know we had our only look into it and this guy was just like stuck you know what I mean and uh so even when we were filming it I was um I would cut myself I would cut I would say cut uh, like thinking that's I, I, you got to be kidding me. That's what you want, and so that's what we want. So after the first season, I finally got the character. He's a very weird character, you know what I mean? But I know I'm not gonna tell you. I had a lot of fun with those kids, man. It was mm-hmm. a lot of fun, you know. They're very talented, very talented. And uh, you know, then when uh, when you first appeared on Sons of Anarchy, you know, back in 2008 in the pilot. Uh, do you remember that experience, sort of filming the show from that early on, and then just continuing this character as it progressed for eight more years i never forgot it because it was a big thing too is it's just that uh before we started filming sons i was a sons of anarchy guy i was tig wasn't invented tig was hawk and that was my character see i was Mm -hmm. part of their sons i was a series regular as the sons of anarchy when they saw the pilot uh it didn't work out so i got fired from sons of anarchy and they rehired me and offered me the role of marcus alfred's and uh and and, you know at the time I, i didn't i didn't um I, I didn't want the job as Marcus Alvarez. It's just, it was just a different, you know, it was a pay raise with pay way wise. It was way different, you know, from being a Sons of Anarchy and, a, and an Alvarez. And my wife convinced me, babe, take the job, just show them what you do, show them what you do, you know. And, uh, mm-hmm. and I'm so glad I listened to my wife because here we are all these years later, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So I never, it was just, a, it was a, what a great character. Thank you. I, I, I thank Kurt Sutter for, uh, for writing that for me and I and Calvin James for continuing to write some better stuff, you know, some great stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, then four years after Sons of Anarchy ended, we have Mayans. At what point did you sort of get wind that they were starting to develop a spinoff to focus on Mayans? Well, they had talked about it, but there's always talk, you know, in Hollywood, there's always something going on. And, uh, mm-hmm. and then one day, uh, Kurt gave me a text me. He goes, hey, you got time to talk? Oh, yeah. He goes, call me up. He goes, hey, just, just go have some lunch, right? You know, I thought maybe it was... Uh, I knew it had to be something about, you know, work. but then friends, you know, he's always been friends with me, but so we sat down and we, we started catching up for about an hour. And then he goes, Hey man, uh, we're going to do it. You know? And uh, I go, and I kind of knew what we're going to He was saying, I go, what are you, what are we going to do? What? He goes, we're doing the minus MC, man. You know? And I go, he goes, when do we start? He goes soon. Six months later, here we are doing minus MC, man. It was, it was mm-hmm. beautiful. It was, um, kind of like a dream come true brother because i've always yeah. wanted it to happen um because i wanted to see more of the minds when i was watching sons i always wanted to see more of the minds you dig and yeah. then, here we are man we got our own shows it's great you know yeah and and just taking such an interesting perspective on the mayans and and just the sort of duality of living as a latino in the u.s to me like just the two sides of it is just so fascinating to be like because you know again talking about edward james almost uh there's always that line in Selena that sticks with everybody about like, you got to be twice as Mexican for the Mexicans. You got to be twice as American to, for the Americans. And, you know, it's exhausting, as he said. And it's just like so great to see a show that's like tackling both like your brotherhood and your loyalty to to your people and your family. And then also to just it's just such a complex show. It's well, so hard. And, to, and, it's, and it's good. Like, well, that was a great I remember that line and it's a great line, but sometimes it's better to be yourself too you dig what i'm yeah. saying you know and that's the way and this was so allows us to be ourselves like you know I, it's um like i say when people ask me about marcus marcus is very close to Emilio. you know Emilio Rivera is marcus alvarez and and, then, and him just being himself you know and, and and everybody all the different characters you know they're all they're latino but they're not doesn't mean they're all chicano we, you know we got right. support we got a little bit of everything and they're letting them be themselves you know what i'm saying so i, I it's so beautiful, brother. It's so, and then, you know, I tell you, when I go on the set, it's like, I saw Rasa. It's like pretty much, even behind the cameras, it's just like, it's like, you know, you know how we love, we love, we love hard. You know, you, you know, we fight hard too. You know, get what I'm saying? But, um, and then, you know, when we're there, we're not, we're not there to fight. And it's, we're acting. But after, when they say cut, brother, it's just a lot of love, brother. It's really beautiful to watch. 
Yeah. And uh, just sort of, you know, our show is called Actors with Issues. So we do touch on some topics. All that... actors have issues, bro. Oh, that's why I started the show. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a great, that's a great title for your, for your, for your place. You know, it's great. Yeah. You know, I, I started the, the show uh, right at the start of the pandemic because I finally had time <laughs> to right, sit and right, talk right, with right. actors. So uh, we recently hit 100 episodes. So we're, we're, we're two years deep into Congratulations, it. Bro. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, you know, in those conversations, so many things have been touched upon when it comes to the issues, whether it's mental health or dealing with stereotypes or just breaking into the industry and getting to talk with so many actors at different levels. So for you, you know, what comes to mind is something that, that you know now about being an actor and about the industry that you wish you had learned earlier? Let it go. You know, mm -hmm. you go to the audition, let it go. Uh, don't dwell on it too much. It's a waste of time. You know, I'm talking about it. You can't change it. Um, stop saying your lines after you did the audition. You, <laughs> we, probably could, we could also have said it better, but you didn't, and uh, or you did. And just let it go, man. And, you know, and don't worry about it. You know, another thing too, bro, and this is the thing, and I, and I, and I taught this early on, is um, don't be a hater. You <laughs> see your guys, you know, there's enough for all. There really is. I've said this in the beginning. The pie is real big. There's enough for all of us. It, if it's not, if you're not part of the pie if you don't do the work. You dig what I'm saying? Do the work. Really mm -hmm. do the work. Uh, and it's a lot of work because if you're not the guy next to you against you, is doing that work. You dig what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. don't feel bad. Sometimes you can do all the work you want. Sometimes you just didn't look the right. You didn't look right. You dig what I'm saying? So there's so many different factors of you not getting the job or getting that job. So let it go. Yeah. Just let it go. You know what I'm saying? I spent too much time on saying, but man, I did so good. I did so good and early on. And um, and then sometimes I would see the person that got the job and I'd say, man, that sucked. You know what I mean? But it was, he was better looking. You know, they wanted a cute guy there or whatever. whatever. <laughs> you know, there was, you know, there's uh, different, so many different factors. But just just mm -hmm. give, it, give it your best shot. Go in there prepared. Go in, go in there on time. Know your lines. Go prepared. And then let it go. You dig? Yeah. I wish I wouldn't let it go a lot sooner, you know? Yeah. And another I, thing I, I've just learned just recently, another thing too, and, uh, you know, act. My thing was, uh, and I, I'm a method actor, but see what's, what would happen, like if I had a bad day, like with Charlie or, or uh, Ron Perlman, if me and him were supposed to be pissed off, I'd come in pissed off. I'd be pissed off the night before and go to work and I wouldn't, I would look at Charlie, I'd give him a nod, I wouldn't say, I would be an asshole. And then we do our scene when they say cut, then I did all my work and then I'd go home but then I go home and I'm still pissed off. Now what I do now, which I've really been doing this for the past six years now, is that I'll get pissed off when I get to set. I'll get pissed off five minutes before they say action. You know what I mean? That's why I'm an actor. You dig what I'm saying? So let me have right. fun with everybody. And it's, uh, as long as I know my lines. And then prepare five minutes. So instead of being pissed off the whole night before, the whole day after taking down. That's another thing. I just And I just recently learned that, bro. So. And I'm already 61 years old, so I wish I would have done that a lot longer. Because I was always, I was always sad. If I had to do a, a sad scene, I'd be sad from the night before, you know, thinking about too many bad things. And no, just act, mm. you know? Yeah. And be, so just simple. be. I mean, at the time when they say action, now start acting. You know what I'm saying? You know? Right. Yeah. And uh, I'm curious. So looking ahead, um, you know, what's on the bucket list for you that you haven't done yet? Are there any, like, dream genres you haven't done? Any co-stars you want to work with? I, I want to, you know, I want to do a, I want to do a, a, a role where I could play like a mentally challenged person. Huh. I think with that, I could do it because then I could just let out everything I ever wanted to live out that I can leave out in real life. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. And I have been in a safe, in a safe place to do it in. And, uh, and just like, just let me, let me run amok, man. I think I could really do something crazy. I mean, not crazy, but I mean, I think I could do some beautiful work with that. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So one day, you see, I got, I got, I got, I got a film. Uh, my wife wrote uh, about my brother when he was passing away here. In my, you know, this whole it was a two week. It, it all took place in two weeks, but um, it was something that was very things you learn. You wish you would have learned a lot sooner, but then it's too late. You know what I'm saying? And some people say it's never too late. No, when you're dying, it's too late. Sometimes. So yeah, it's, it's very, very, very beautiful part. Everything I think about it, and that's when I want to get to a sad moment when I'm doing mines. I just think about my brother. You dig, you know. Mm. So yeah, I want to do. That's what I want to do. I want to do that. That's going to be big for me. I mean, as far as something big, it when I'm not saying it's going to be big 
in the world, but it'll be something I did for my brother, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so just uh, before we go, I want to just uh, throw a few more last questions at you. Sure. Uh, in a, it's a game we call Now That We Know You, since we've gotten a chat for about uh, you know sure. 20 minutes now. Uh, so fill in the blank. If I weren't working in the arts, I'd be? What I want to be or what I want or what I, what I would be? What you would be if you weren't an actor? I would be a, I'd be a mechanical engineer. That's what I was before I, before I became a mechanical engineer. Retired. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's the best advice you've ever gotten? Just listen. If I were to listen before, I mean, just, just listen. Because if I were to listen, I, went, I wouldn't have done, been to all the stupid shit I've done in my life. You know, and then, but I was dead cool. I'm not, I'm not dead cool guy. You know what I'm saying? You know, I want to run my own, you know, but uh, uh, listen. And uh, what's the worst advice you've ever gotten? <laughs> I can't say that, but uh, <laughs> 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 uh, see it. I said, you know, I guess the worst advice uh, you'll get out in five years, but don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, yeah. it is because you just you don't want to do five years in prison. You say, "Yep, you had five years. Don't worry about it." No, no, no. Yeah, I guess I guess that's 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 usually I'm being honest. You know, what I'm talking about so that's right. you know, yeah. But I didn't okay. take the advice. You know, what I'm talking about I didn't take right. the advice. <laughs> uh, what role have you had the most fun playing? Marcus Alvarez. Hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's been going on since. So, you know, even though you know we had the four year break, you're, I do all these comic cons as Marcus Albert, everybody comes to see Marcus Albert, so you never really let go of the guy, you know? Yeah. It's a trip. It's a trip. And uh, lastly, in 10 words or less, what advice would you give to a young actor? Do not give up and train. Mm -hmm. And you know what it is, brother? You know, the best training is life. Yeah. Everything you went through in life, what you're going through in life, brother, whether it hurts, whether it makes you laugh, whatever the pain, whatever it is, my acting coaches say, get those little, those are the pearls. He would say, get those pearls and put them in your satchel. That's what he would say. Hmm. And then just pick them up once in a while when you need them. You dig what I'm saying? Acting is life, man. It's just the best experience. Yeah. I mean, your experience, you know. Awesome. Well, Emilio, thank you so much, man, for, for joining us on the show. Such a pleasure chatting with you. Pleasure was mine, bro. Thank you so much. And congratulations. I, I love the title of your podcast. It's great, man. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, so if anyone wants to uh, give you a follow on uh, Instagram or any uh, social media, yeah, where can they find you? Emilio Rivera 48. That's on Instagram and Twitter. And just Emilio Rivera on Facebook, brother. Folks, of course, you can always find us on Instagram at Actors with Issues. Give me a follow at Juan Ayala Official and check out all of our video interviews at youtube.com slash Actors with Issues podcast or listen on the go wherever you get your podcast every Monday and all month of May. We'll have bonus episodes every Thursday. So that's two episodes a week you'll get to see. Don't miss Emilio Rivera in Mayans MC Tuesdays at 10 p.m. Eastern on FX. I'm Juan Ayala. This is Actors with Issues and we'll see you next week.